breaking news. Fridays are awesome. Happy to have you watching this last Friday in March. I'm Carl Azus. First up, a battle for the city of Palmyra. We've reported on it before. It's an ancient landmark in central Syria. The ISIS terrorist group took over Palmyra last year and it destroyed a pair of 2,000 year old temples there because ISIS believed they conflicted with the group's severe interpretation of Islam. ISIS has used the city for mass executions, but now Syrian government troops are battling to take Palmyra back. They've been helped by Russian airstrikes, but the troops' progress into the city is slow because ISIS fighters reportedly leave mines in places where they retreat. Palmyra is a strategically important place. Capturing it could hinder the movement of ISIS. U.S.-led airstrikes continue to target the terrorists in other parts of Syria. Officials from the World Health Organization say no one knows how far the Zika virus will spread worldwide. A new study suggests it might have gotten to Brazil in 2013. There are now thousands of suspected cases there, hundreds in the U.S., and the virus has spread as far away as Australia, as some Australians who've traveled to the Caribbean and other Zika-affected areas have returned home with the virus. It's particularly dangerous for pregnant women, though Zika threatens others as well. The mosquito that spreads it is found in areas where more than half the global population lives. Zika, a virus unheard of 70 years ago, is exploding around the planet, creating what the World Health Organization calls a global health emergency. Common symptoms include fever, rash, headaches, and red eyes, if there are any symptoms at all. Four out of five people who get Zika don't even know it. Zika is spread primarily by the female Aedes aegypti mosquito. She's called the roach of the mosquito world due to her crafty ways of hiding and breeding inside homes, making her hard to find and eliminate. Zika has also been linked to Guillain-Barre, a rare autoimmune disorder that can lead to paralysis. But what makes Zika really scary is an alarming connection between the virus and microcephaly. That's a neurological disorder where babies are born with small heads and small brains, with severe developmental issues, even death. Some countries are so concerned, they are warning women not to get pregnant. While in the United States, CDC officials are telling pregnant women not to travel to any of the countries where Zika is circulating. Scientists are working around the clock to attack the virus, but as of yet, there's no vaccine or medicine to treat Zika. So protect yourself by using and reapplying insect repellent, wearing thick, long sleeve shirts and pants, and staying inside in screened air-conditioned rooms and areas where Zika is active. And be sure to remove any standing water where mosquitoes can breed. Checking in now with the U.S. presidential nomination process. Voters in more than half of U.S. states have had their say. For the Democrats so far, former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton leads with 1,229 pledged delegates and 482 superdelegates. Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders has won 924 pledged delegates and 27 superdelegates. For the Republicans so far, businessman Donald Trump leads with 741 delegates. Texas Senator Ted Cruz has won 461 delegates, and Ohio Governor John Kasich has 145. At the party conventions this summer, these delegates are expected to vote for the candidates who won them. But if a candidate doesn't win enough delegates to clinch his or her party's nomination before that, a brokered or contested convention is possible things could get wild pretty fast. And let me explain how that might be the case. Let's imagine we have a state out there that is a winner-take-all state, that it went to Donald Trump, and all of the people there are bound delegates, meaning on the first ballot, they must cast their vote for Donald Trump, no matter what their personal feelings are. On the next ballot, if he does not get the magic number then, about half the people in this hall, a little bit more, will become unbound, and they won't have to vote as their state voted, and on subsequent ballots even more become unbound until virtually everyone here can vote as they please. Then, in our mythical state, we may find that actual Trump supporters comprise only eight of the 20 delegates. And maybe there are some people here to support Ted Cruz, and maybe some to support John Kasich. And if these people start wheeling and dealing, and for argument's sake, let's make it Cruz that they choose, you could find that in this state, 12 people could go to Ted Cruz, 12 delegates, and only eight for Donald Trump, even though he won the state. And you can bet if that happens, there will be a lot of sharp words and debates going on 
on the convention floor. From Atlantic to Pacific, gee, this roll call is terrific. Let's get down to business and see who's watching. James F. Dowdy School is with us today from Bangor, Maine, the Pine Tree State. Hello to the Bulldogs. Moving out west to Arizona, Mountain View High School is in the city of Mesa. It's great to have the Toros along today. And crossing the Pacific, we arrive in China. Hangzhou International School is there. They're watching in Hangzhou. At a restaurant in Cleveland, Ohio, there's a nonprofit program that gives workers free training every week. Though there's a zero tolerance policy when it comes to violence or drugs, students there get paid, they get help finding counseling and housing, and according to the program's founder, there's an incredibly high success rate. It's a character study in second chances. I was in and out of jail. Every day you wake up, it's like, you're not going to mouth to be nothing. Nobody's going to hire you. You've got felonies. I did my time. I want to move on. I want to go forward. I was trying to find employment, but with the felony that I caught, it just, I couldn't really get hired anywhere. I was a, a reckless teenager, and one night I was arrested and thrown in jail. Fortunately, I had a judge who gave me a break. Everyone deserves that fair and equal second chance. At Edwin's, you can come to us and start over. It's a fine dining restaurant. We have a very classic French menu, but also it's a free six-month culinary and hospitality training program. We're going to julienne the carrot, okay? My left hand moves, my right hand follows. What we try to do here is teach those fundamentals. Keep them close to the blade. There you go. All the students here are formerly incarcerated or have had a brush with the law, like myself. What's the big difference between California Pinot Noir and Burgundy? They expect us to work really hard, but they gave me a sense of purpose. Nobody even mentioned the birthday. I was, that's, that's upsetting to me. They were somewhere I belong, people who need me somewhere. My value did not decrease because I <laughs> have a record. You can overcome a hard challenge here at Edwin's. It gives you confidence. They say I make the best banana boss around. <laughs> We're here because we want to see them succeed. I'm here, I'm doing it, I'm going to finish, and I'm going to get a job. So good. How good? Real good. To have a second chance is to have a new life. If you're ready to work hard, you can change the stars. All dogs are known for panting. This one is known for painting. His owner, who's also an artist, was doing her thing one day when her three-year-old pet nudged her. She asked if he wanted to paint. He wagged harder. So now she sets him up with some non-toxic colors, a paintbrush attached to a paper towel tube, and lets him captain a canvas. Not sure how he feels about the beret and scarf, but the artistic animal's abstractions sell for as much as $200 the proceeds going to help other dogs. They call him a regular dog Vinci, but don't think other breeds couldn't compete. Consider the Chagaldan Retriever, the Matesian, the Bichon Frida, the Chihuahua Warhol, the Basquiat Hound, the Surratweiler, the Lhasa Picapso, the Calivaggio, and of course, the great Michael Newfoundlangelo. I'm Carl Azuz, brushing up on my puns. <laughs>